I kept saying from the beginning, it's, it's more psychological than physical. So you really, really need to talk to somebody or get in a support group. It really helps, as well as with the, the financial aspect of it. I, I really think that should be on a physician's to-do list. Like, you don't just need to schedule surgery and go have treatment. You need to absolutely see a therapist, and somebody needs to follow up to make sure you're doing it. And you need to see a financial. I've seen people lose all their savings over this, you know, because all this medication is not covered. So those two things should be on the top of every physician and nurse's to-do list to give cancer patients. I want to say um, yes to that counseling piece for some, but that not, that's not what I chose. I chose silence. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my friends. And at the time, we had cultural bears in the city that had cancer that I was taking care of, but my choice was to go within. Many, no one here knew I had cancer until well over, um, because the Holy Spirit told me, don't tell anybody. Just be quiet and go within. And I just jumped fully into my shrine and into the power of the earth and the Holy Spirit angels that can heal. And I called every saint, every archangel. I went to churches, burned candles, uh, stayed all night, slept in front of my altar, called my grandparents, did the rosary. I mean, you name it. That's what I chose to do because I find, for me, I didn't want the death look. People do that. They say, oh. They're casting a spirit on you, y'all. They don't know it, but I didn't want that. I don't want that. Well, I'd like to say the Musicians Clinic served as a broker of services for me, that they were able to get assistance for my mortgage from Music Cares, and I did not have to worry about my mortgage payment for three months. And that was a real blessing because I have the gig to make ends meet. And uh, she's sitting there. They, hey, I had, uh, I know she's trained in Feldenkrais. Is that the way you say it? But she's, uh, she was also my therapist. Once a week, I had to stop and go to see her in Boogie. <laughs> and she gave me, um, you call them lessons, right? She gave me lessons. And then when I first went, I would be like, just thinking about all kinds of things. And I went to her over a year, and she had to tell me at some point, you need to close your eyes. Like, literally, I had to be told to close my eyes and stop the world and be present in the moment. So, and I didn't pay one penny. And I don't know how much those lessons cost, and I know I went well over a year. I did not pay one penny for that service. So that was very helpful because she listened and she was never judgmental. She probably heard stuff she didn't want to hear, but she got me to relax. When I went through chemo, my feet went through some changes. <laughs> and I was embarrassed because, you know, my nails turned black and all kind of ugly stuff. And she, she even got me to the point that I could take my socks off. And that might sound like something minor, but to be able to trust a caregiver when you're most vulnerable and when you feel ugly. I just told Wendy a little while ago, Wendy was the person that told me, you are enough. I may be big, I may be brown, my hair may be curly, it doesn't matter, I am enough. So that's all I have to say.